then you could probably say that taking dried beef and pounding it into that fluffy looking mixture is one of the most unusual techniques that you would find in any cuisine anywhere in the world. Got some friends that wanted to see how to do it, so I invited them over. But I thought I would put something adventurous with it as well. You know, most people would say cooking cactus is an unusual technique, but it's really pretty straightforward if you know what to do with the cactus paddles. They're really simple to work with. Grab one with a pair of tongs. You have to clean it of all of the spines, all of the nodes. So you go around the perimeter of that cactus. And then I always hold it with a pair of tongs and hold my knife perpendicular and scrape off all the nodes. You have to do this carefully and without too much pressure. You don't want to cut into the cactus. And when the cactus is completely clean, I'm going to cut it into about half inch pieces. Well, it doesn't take too long to clean a cactus paddle and dice it up like that. But if you happen to live anywhere near a Mexican grocery store, you can go into the produce section and usually you'll find the cactus already cleaned for you and diced up, which is what I'm going to use here. The cactus dish that I'm going to make for you, it's seasoned with dried guajillo chilies and roasted garlic and a little bit of roasted tomato. The first thing that we have to do is to prepare the guajillo chilies. I've got a little garlic dry roasting in the skillet until it's completely soft. And over kind of medium heat here, I'm going to toast guajillo chilies. They need to be cleaned first. I'm going to pull off the stem in and then just tear them open and then you toast them in your skillet pressing them down you'll hear a little sizzle like that and then flip them over you'll notice a slight color change there and after a few seconds more when they become very aromatic they're toasted and ready to go. I've got two more of them to clean here and toast. Okay, I'm going to tear these guys up and put them into the blender jar along with the roasted garlic. The garlic has cooled off enough now that the papery skin just comes right off of the roasted cloves. And though I could start with fresh ripe tomatoes and roast them. I'm a huge fan of uh, the canned fire roasted tomatoes because they give me a lot of the flavor but very easy to work with. I'm going to add about a half a can of the tomatoes to the blender, undrained. Put the top on and make a puree. And I'm going to start the pot for cooking the cactus. A little olive oil goes in there to warm. I'm going to slice an onion. The onions are going to go into the pan with the olive oil, and I'm going to cook them over medium to medium high until they begin to brown. We want this cooking to go pretty quickly because we don't want the onions to soften too much as they brown. And now I'm going to add the prepared cactus to it. Now here's where the magic happens. I'm going to put the top on it and let that cook over about a medium heat for five minutes. What's going to happen during that period is all the sticky stuff, the mucilaginous part of the cactus, will just come out in the pan. You'll see. Now in that steamy environment, all of that undesirable sticky substance was all let out. But then as I stir it for the next few minutes, it'll all evaporate. Turning this dish into something that's really beautiful, light, and crunchy, almost like 
I'd say kind of like a green bean, but with a lemony kind of flavor to it. Scrape in tomato chili. Boy, I can smell that chili. This is going to take about 15 minutes or so to reduce to the consistency of tomato paste. About a half a cup of water. Turn down the temperature to medium low and let that simmer for a few minutes for all those flavors to come together beautifully. I have some friends, Stephen and Jennifer, who are adventurous cooks and wanted to learn the details of making a very traditional machaca. So I invited them over for a quick little lesson. I mean, rustic as it is, it's really quite simple when you start with some dried beef, what's called carne seca in the Mexican grocery store, or with some good quality beef jerky. Then heat it on the grill or under your stove's broiler for just a few minutes until it's a little bit crispy. It cools down a little bit, we'll start to rip it up into, into little bits here. Now this is the point at which the fun part starts. So when, when I learned to do this in Mexico, it was all done stone against stone. Special river rock that was used to pound this into this light fluffy thing. This is a Thai mortar and it will work really well for the same kind of thing. So if you're game to help me with this, well I'm going to show you first how to do this thing. So you tear the pieces in small like that uh, because you're going to try to reduce this now into little fluffy bits. This is more or less what I think you want it to look like. Well, not fine like that, yeah, or? But it should look kind of powdery, but you should be able to see some of the fibers. So I'm gonna tear this up if you don't mind starting to pound on this. Sure. For, you'll get the, this is the real deal. This is the authentic way to do it. So I'll let you start with that amount of it there. And you'll notice that if you just pound like this, it'll be okay. But if you push it down as you're pounding and kind of twist, It'll take less of your movement. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm gonna to get together all the rest of the ingredients to turn this shredded jerky into a filling. So first I gotta roast and peel and clean and dice up some poblano chilies. Then chop up some tomatoes, chop some onion, and then finally mince up some garlic. Okay, now that you've been so patient and done this incredible job, let me show you another way that you can do the shredding of the jerky. Um, it, you tear up the crispy pieces. Now they've gotten very crisp as they've cooled off from the broiler. <laughs> Put that into the blender jar. And then I always start it out by pulsing it on a low speed. Now let me show you how this comes out. It's a little bit different. I'm gonna just pour it out right next to the other. Well, for sure, the color's a little bit different, right? And you're gonna to have to, it's a little finer, but it'll still give you a lot of that same kind of feeling, that same kind of flavor that you would get out of the other one. But I have to say, if you're just not in the mood <laughs> to do all that pounding, <laughs> then the blender can be your friend. Okay, so now we're on to the making of the filling. When the meat is ready, heat some olive oil in a pan and then add a spoonful of fresh rendered pork lard. When the lard is melted and is hot, add some onions. And then when they're browned, add the pounded and fluffy looking dried beef. Then stir everything together until the meat turns a lighter, sort of nutty looking brown and is very aromatic. Then add the poblano, tomato, and garlic, and let everything cook, stirring it frequently until the mixture comes together. Do you put those down until the tomatoes have almost disintegrated? Yes, or? and they will become sort of sauce-like in this mixture. I heated up some fresh-made herb-infused flour tortillas to serve with that nopal dish that I had made earlier. All the dish needed was a little sprinkling of fresh cheese to finish it off. And I filled the rest of the tortillas with some of our gutsy, rustic, delicious machaca. 
Okay, you have the classic Baja Burritos de Machaca, but they're not just any Machaca burritos here because these are done in a special flour tortilla that's flavored with cilantro, garlic, little rosemary, something that we learned when we were in Baja. Okay, you cannot leave Todos Santos without one good drink from here. Okay. So I, first of all, yes. I'm going to introduce you to Chef Danny. Hi, Chef. Hi, Chef. Hi, Chef. How are you doing? Hi, Chef. It's, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Welcome to the Hotel I'm looking California. forward to a good drink here. Absolutely. And I hear you're the master. What do you have? Well, I can make you a classic margarita, yeah. which is... That's uh, my favorite. Yeah, with Damiana base. Okay. And then I can make you a creative one, which will surprise. I'm I know you're... Completely okay. in your hands. Oh, perfect. Let's start with the regular one. That's the Damiana liquor I, I was telling you about. Oh, sprig of rosemary. There's so much rosemary around here. Our special today is a creative uh, Jamaica agave and vanilla margarita. Salute. salute! And salute, salute to you too, Chef Danny. Chef Danny, enjoy. Boy, I've got, that is so delicious, I've got all kinds of questions. First, tell me about what the rimming is here, because it's kind of spicy and kind of sweet. I make some salt, some sugar in the raw, mm -hmm. and spicy chilies. The vanilla in there is so soft and rich and round and it goes beautifully with all those spices. This is, I have to say, this is probably one of the best margaritas I've ever had in oh, my right. life. I'm it's really, like it. really Perfect. delicious. Right. This is great. <laughs> 